Welcome to the assembly instructions video for the photovoltaic MC4 connector system. This video will show you the recommended way of how to assemble the MC4 connector system as well as the recommended and required tools needed for assembly. For more information about this PV MC4 connector system as well as the UL recognized tools for assembly please refer to our Soroline 2 catalog. This catalog can be downloaded at multi-contact-usa.com. The assembly instructions MA232 for this MC4 connector series can also be downloaded. Here are the tools needed to properly assemble the MC4 connector series, including those required by UL. They include stripping pliers, crimping pliers, a UL required tool for assembly, an open end spanner set, also a UL required tool for assembly. This spanner set is used for securing, opening the locking device and tightening the cable gland. An adjustable torque screwdriver with a socket wrench one quarter of an inch hexagonal to three eighths of an inch square driver and a custom socket wrench adapter. And finally, the test plug. A tool case can be purchased from Multicontact USA. The tools included in the case include the torque wrench, the PVMS tool, and a test plug. The tools not included in the case are the crimping pliers with their inserts and the stripping pliers. Along with the tools, you will need these PV connectors and contacts for assembly. For North American installations, in accordance to UL and the National Electric Code 2008, you are permitted to use single conductor USC-2 cable type or single conductor cable listed and labeled as PV. For all other countries, please refer to your product safety testing and certification organization as well as to your electric code. For this instructional video, it is important to note that we use a specific male and female cable coupler. In the Soro Line 2 catalog, you can find a table of more information about the types of cable couplers you can choose depending on your wire diameter. The wire diameter affects the inserted cable gland of the coupler. It also affects the contacts. For the pins, although their pin diameter remains unchanged, the crimped sleeves differ for different diameters. Here's an example. We use a standard American wire gauge 10 cable for this video. This cable that we used is a USC-2 type cable with a 5.3 millimeter outside diameter. For the female cable coupler, again we choose the corresponding type for an American wire gauge 10 cable. Now you're ready for assembly. The first step in the assembly process is to strip the wire. For that you will need the wire stripping pliers and choose the corresponding American wire gauge in the gauge selector. For this video we choose American wire gauge 10. Next you insert the wire and strip the cable insulation. Take between 6 to 7.5 millimeters off. This is about 1 quarter of an inch. Make sure not to cut the individual strands. For this part of the assembly, you will use full cycle crimping pliers. This means that the handle does not release until the crimp cycle is complete. Some versions of the CZM crimping pliers have a connector retaining lever. This lever must be opened to allow the connector to slide into the locator housing. Now place the contact into the locator housing with the open end of the crimp facing directly up. Close the pliers slightly to lock the contact into position, but stop before the contact begins to deform. Make sure to push the strip portion of the cable completely to the contact. Close the crimping tool completely until the handle releases. 
Now check the crimp. Make sure all wire strands are contained in the crimp. And make sure that the crimp is fully closed with no visible cracks, chips, or areas where pieces of the original contact have broken off. A visible wire has brush of strands on the other side of the crimp. After checking the crimp, give it a slight tug to make sure it was crimped correctly. Now insert the crimp connector into the male cable coupler through the back of the connector housing until it locks into place and give it a slight tug to ensure it is locked into the housing. For assembly control, insert the test pin with the corresponding side into the socket to the end position. If the contact is correctly assembled, the white marking on the test pin must still be visible. Now you will tighten the connector using the PVMS tools followed by the torque wrench. Please note that it is important not to rely solely on the PVMS tools to ensure the proper torque value has been achieved. The first step is to take your two PVMS tools and tighten the connector as follows. Do this hand tight and then insert the connector into the custom socket wrench adapter and tighten it further until it clicks, at which point you have reached the acceptable torque value. Please make sure to repeat these assembly steps for the female connector as well. According to the National Electric Code 2008, PV connectors not designed to be disconnected under load need to be unplugged only with a tool, not just with bare hands. For that reason, Multicontact engineered a safety lock clip, PVSSH4. With this lock clip in place, you can only remove it from the cable coupler using the PVMS tool. This example shows the incorrect way to attach them together. When connecting them together correctly, the holes of the lock clip should align with the grooves of the male cable coupler. You can see this if you were to hold the lock clip on top of the coupler. As you can see, the holes align. Here are the two possibilities in action. Now we will show you how easy it is to unplug the two connectors using the PVMS tool. Just insert the tool into the two holes and disconnect. This completes the instructional video on how to assemble the photovoltaic connector system MC4. For further information, please contact us at multi-contact-usa.com or simply calling us at the following number. Thank you for watching. Thank you.